like when we drink good things, I will drink them all because uh, it's good. And when it's good, it's good. When we drink bad beers, like the Pilsner, that is, you, you, you drink them and it's like, ah, man, ah it's so disgusting. Man, I don't like this feeling first and then I don't like the hangover. I hate that. I don't, I don't like also losing the the control of your body like you can you can feel that your body is not uh, connecting with your brain uh, all the way it's just I, i don't like this feeling i dislike it it's just so yeah sometimes i get drunk with you guys but most of the time it's just okay the beer is not great I'm not gonna spend like time drinking this because I, I, I'll go in my bed and tomorrow I'm gonna have a great day and we're gonna walk to this city and see great things. Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt Migaki, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Hotel podcast. The Vox and Hops Hotel podcast is brought to you by Sound Talent Media and Evergreen Podcasts, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians, talk all about their lives and music while sharing killer craft beers. This Vox and Hops episode is presented by Heavy Munch. Montreal. Heavy Montreal are Montreal's premier metal promoter. They present a bunch of amazing shows all year long here in Montreal. And trust me when I say this to you, if you are ever in Montreal and you are looking for a great show to go to, well, Heavy Montreal will most definitely have you covered. I'm beyond stoked to have Heavy Montreal behind the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I'd just like to ask you to follow the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast on the podcast platform of your choice. But more than that, I would love for you to tell a friend about the podcast. There's someone in your life that just loves listening to in-depth conversations, in-depth interviews with metal musicians. Well, you should definitely let them know that the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast exists. If you would encourage one of your friends to become a brand new Vox and Hops head, that would be something that I would truly appreciate. Now, today, in the podcast. I'm very stoked to be with Dominic Grimaud, who fills in for Cryptopsy when Ollie is busy. He is most notably from The Last Felony and Ion Dissonance. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops, episode number 454. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, I'm very stoked to finally, I'm, uh, slightly embarrassed it's taken me this long to get you on the podcast considering you've been in my helping out my band for the past five years uh, five years very happy to be with Dominic Grimao uh, known for The Last Felony uh, Ion Dissonance he's been with Cryptopsy for the past five years whenever Ollie can't be around Good lad, we are here live in Eindhoven, Netherlands. Netherlands. I, I feel like I said that right. We are at Van Mole Craft Beer Bar. Let's start with the cheers. Hell yes. Let's start with the simple. How you doing? I'm great, man. It's um, it's been a nice tour, and uh, it's uh, I can't complain. It's just nice show all around. It's a uh, good adventure. It's been a sick tour. Uh, we're out here right now with Atheist, Almost Dead, uh, 72 Legions, Monastery just dropped off. We have about, I think, nine shows left at this point. Uh, tour has been killer, super sick. Uh, always a pleasure to hang out with you. Uh, let's go way back, though, and I want to hear about the very first beer you ever drank. What is the Molson X story? Or the whatever La, La, La Bad Bleu probably story from your youth. No, no, no. Th this was Laurentide. Laurentide because my father was drinking Laurentide at home. All my family was. And I, I, I can still taste the, the, the feeling of drinking that beer. So what It's was a, that story? How old were you? Oh, What man, was the experience? I, 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 I don't remember. Uh, I was young enough. Not old enough. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, yeah, for for sure. My 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 father made me drink this for for the first time. Your father gave it to you and I oh, said, "Hey, yeah, have yeah, a probably. sip." You just have a sip. Yes, I love that. <laughs> yes, we have uh, good good stories in my my family. <laughs> so so I I know you very well because we've been touring together for the past five years. So so I'm going to pretend that I don't know and I'm going to pick information right. out of you. Uh, you. 
are an avid craft beer enthusiast. We spend most of our days on tour uh, going around and trying out some beer spots, such as Van Mol, where we're at right now. And today we hit uh, a good spot. Sometimes it's not good. Yeah, so, well, uh, States has been better for us, but uh, Europe is way better than it was five years ago. Absolutely. Way better. So, so tell I, me about I this. remember the, 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 fir- the only place we got on the last tour in 2019 was... Bruce, Bruce, how do you pronounce it? BRUS from Copenhagen. Yeah, that, that was I, I could still remember that we were still talking about that place when we <laughs> were true. going to that tour. <laughs> was like, we're going to that place. Hell, fucking And, yes. But, but, but on on this tour, we had so much great beer. Seriously, it's been. But I at at the same time, my taste in beer has changed a lot because back then it was only IPA, 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 IPA. Now I'm more. Um, I step down a notch to uh, drink more and less high percentage beer. You are a very controlled drinker, which I'm going to get to. <laughs> uh, I know that you uh, were an avid craft beer enthusiast before the big hype started. I know that when you were touring with The Last Felony, you and Vince, Vince was making you drink all the things. So talk to me about your craft beer adventure, your evolution. Where did this come from? Uh, you know, it's, it's like a 15-year project. Oh, yeah, man. It's been a long time. It's, it's all, all because of Vince. Hell, yes. Vince, uh, shout out to Vince, uh, drummer of The Last Felony, also one of the main dudes behind Masorum Brassatorium in Montreal. And uh, when we were touring, we, we always go to those places. I, I remember the, the first IPA I got was Dieu du Ciel, which was so, so, so bitter. La Carne du Diable. La Carne du Diable. But we went to that place like two times a week and just to drink this fucking IPA. But I, man, the taste is like, I, I couldn't drink this these days. <laughs> it's, it's like a tongue just, scraper. Yes, it's so <laughs> ah, dry and uh, it's just... Then, then after that, Vince started brewing at his own place. So we, I, I, I kind of learned a little bit, but I, I never got like into the what is going there and there, what, what the ingredient is making this and this. I'm always like the type of guys like, is it good? Yes, no, skip, next one. That's true, and I love that we we do receive a lot of free beer because of the podcast, which I'm very grateful for. Any Vox and Hops heads that are listening, um, we love it when we give some free beer on tour. And you're like one sip, and you're like, yes, no, not good. There's something about it I don't like. Uh, I, I cannot pinpoint. Uh, so sometimes you know I'm asking, ah, oh, what is it that I, I don't like in this mm-hmm. beer? So maybe next next time I'll know. What is it I don't like? But I don't remember. It's just something not interesting for me to know what is what. I just want to drink a good product. So Laurent said to super bitter IPAs. No, may- maybe I-, I got the phase of going to the Fofs and drinking Molson, Molson X. What they had? They had Molson, Molson X. I no, I think we used to call this uh, Molson Flu. Because uh, the next morning, uh, when you were uh, waking up after a you night of the foof, uh, yeah. you were sick. That's true. Uh, yeah. Always. That's true. Always five dollars a pitcher. With this <laughs> I think it was very cheap. old, and I don't think they washed their lines very often. No, 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 no. <laughs> Still, the foofs aren't super clean. I, I, uh, maybe they are. It's I, a little bit cleaner than it used to be. I think they had some time to clean during the pandemic, but still. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you work to, to, to bitter IPAs, and then Vince kept brewing, and Vince, I know a lot of the history, so Vince started to go to Vermont. Oh, yeah. But, well, we, we, we all went together. It was me, Filion, um, Chaput, Sebastien, the, all the whole Mercerum all, all the gang. Mercerum guy. And uh, we, the first time we went there, we didn't know we had like a, um, <laughs> how do you say, a mount that you can bring back. So it was me, Filion, and Vince, and the trunk of the car was full. I, and when I mean full, it was like overboard. Uh, yeah, like it was just like, overflowing. I, I think you, you you can bring eight liters of. I'm not I'm not savvy with the laws, but I know it's not I, I very much. I think it's much. something like that. But we each add twenty, <laughs> and it was like. When we went to the border, the, the officer came and he opened. I was there. I was. I saw his face. It was like he opened the trunk. It was like, 
Oh no, man! What I'm getting <laughs> into, and he, he, he was kind of nice because he explained us what was the law, and but we had to pay taxes. The, the taxes and on duties. everything, so it was super expensive. But at least they didn't trash the, all the beer. Yeah, because yeah. they could have done that. <laughs> nice people out there sometimes. Yes, sometimes. you paid your taxes, not yeah. <laughs> Yes, we. I, I paid my tax. <laughs> so all this went on, and then there was a point when they were like we're gonna make a brewery yes they were yes. like we're gonna start a brewery an american style brewery where people come up to the counter you we don't distribute we're only gonna make beer and the bank laughed at them and didn't believe it and you were basically a part of Messorum early on Messorum started in my living room that's crazy and um i found the name with them we paid the logo we paid everything but at some point it was just it was getting too big for me and uh my passion was always music so i knew that going in there was uh, i don't know it was stressful it's just it's and, a major uh, investment too. oh yeah man it was and and if you look at the misorum if you look at the misorum guys i love you guys there but you guys have all aged Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> we've all aged. Yeah, we, but we've all. I but, feel uh, the stress is aged. Oh yeah, a the bit stress more. must be like, oh man. I, I'm sure I, I wouldn't have to take it like <laughs> great. But uh, at at the time, also, I was the only one who had uh, property. So this was going to be uh, in uh, a, par- you call a part of the down payment. Yes, a part exactly. Of the... It's and it was scary for me, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I'm. I'm not into that, and and uh, I couldn't see myself like I didn't know what was my part, and like yeah, yeah. Well, the Vince is the brewer, Filion's the graphic guy, Chapu's involved in the business side of things. Yeah. Where did you fit in? Exactly. It was, uh, was the handyman or what? It was just uh, <laughs> and like still to that day, I was like, oh, a beer for me is still Pleasure. good beer yeah. or bad beer. It's just and uh, I didn't see myself like that. So I. Uh, I sent them a text and was super uh, friendly and they were like, oh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to step down from this and uh, I'm going to help you guys. So when they started the business, I went there, helped them and we're still friends to this day. It's just uh, I'm not a part of the business. Is there a moment where you're like, oh, shit, I should have taken, oh, yes, sure. taken the course, leap? Of yeah. course, but I, I think the main part of this was not being there with my friends having this project built with my friends this is the only regret i have it's not that it's big and it's fun and yes of course uh, all of that but it's just uh, just having to work with with my friends that i have like since 20 years maybe more than that it's just what i've been like a nice adventure for sure but Man, I, I see them. They're all tired, and and we're here <laughs> in Europe. They're killing it. They're killing it. Yeah, we're we're here in Europe having fun. It's just something different. It's Life just, path. Sometimes you choose a path. Exactly. And it's just exactly. The way it is. Yeah. It's not something you predict. It's just something that is happening. We're at Van Mall. We didn't even talk about what we're drinking. Uh, let's give some respect to the brewery here. They actually brew on premise. I can see downstairs. There's some stuff going. On, I think there's definitely kegs going on down there. What are you drinking on your side there? Um, do you remember? Because uh, it was a Pilsner. <laughs> I think it's a Hoppy Pilsner. Hoppy Pilsner. Simcoe hops, yes. I think, if yeah. I remember correctly. It's good. It's good. You can taste the Pilsner, and you also taste um, a little bit of IPA. Hops, the hops, 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 yes. hops in it. Uh, I'm crushing a double IPA in the afternoon, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to try it. It's definitely not hazy. It's more of like an old school style, but it's very uh, it's well done. A, it's a Count Diab style. Uh, it's not I, too bitter, though. No. It smells amazing. It's so good. So good. Um, soundtrack of your youth when you're growing up in your parents' or guardian's house. What music were your parents listening to when you were not control of the radio? What was going on in your house? What music was playing? Uh, definitely Pink Floyd. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Pink Floyd. All the way. My, yeah, my, my father is the biggest fan of Pink Floyd. I, I, I've listened to Dark Side of the Moon so much in my life that I, like, I had the vi- vinyl. And I was like the you hear the clock just and always the, going the sound. on. Yeah. It was just yeah. My dad was uh, Zeppelin, uh, Black Sabbath, uh, 
And of course, my my mother was uh, Quebecois style, uh, all those kind of music, and and both of them were dancing. They they, they did contests like um, dancing really? contests. I uh, didn't know uh, that, like ballroom dancing. Well, uh, maybe I, I don't know. Like couples like, dancing, like yeah, ta- yeah. like tango, yeah, and yeah, yeah, with cha cha, uh, yeah, and, and, and the, the costumes. Yes, yeah, the costume and everything. La danse so sociale. maybe Is that what it's because called? nobody is in, in nobody in my family is playing music. And maybe this is where I got the rhythm. Interesting. Mm, probably. Interesting. Probably. What? Um, when? When did metal come a part of your life? And what was your parents' reaction to you bringing more extreme music into the oh, house? Oh, so this you should ask my mother when we were driving to uh, Atlantic City <laughs> and uh, me listening to Metallica in the car with my headphones and tried to sing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my um, my neighbor uh, was. Uh, How do you say, kin- kindergarten me or... Uh, uh, your babysitter. Yeah. So he, na- he was older and he, he was in too mild. So he, he was coming to my place with his leather jacket and uh, Metallica patches. Well, good on your guy. parents for not stereotyping him and letting him watch you back oh, then. Oh, yeah. Because in another world, kid, you never uh, know, you know. He's now, uh, he has a, a super great job. He's just the best. But like this... Made me listen to Mel super young. I mean, like six, seven. Nice. And it was Metallica. Metallica. I, I remember the first album was, uh, of course, uh, around two thousand. May, maybe it was bef- before that, but Megadeth and Pantera and uh, this is where I, I man. This is what I liked the man, the, the music, and uh, I couldn't play guitar. I was like, oh, I need to play guitar in my life, and. Uh, And uh, yeah, it was uh, propane. I had like a propane. Do you remember? You said um, this the other day, yeah. Uh, what was this? Columbia disc, uh, something? Yes. Where yeah, you, you used to you used to put money into an envelope, or or they would send you yeah, stuff. Yeah, they send you stuff, but but you had to buy 12 CDs. Exactly. Or something like that. But it was cheap. And it was super cheap. So at the first order, you get to pick like f- 15 discs or correct. So I got like uh, all those everything they had mail, like even like. Uh, I thought it was smell, but I had the meatloaf. <laughs> it was album, bad out of hell. Because like it was It's like a badass a, cover. Yeah, it it yeah. was a badass yeah. cover. And uh like yeah, a you, bad out of hell. <laughs> <laughs> But when I opened it I was like, Oh, this is not Mel but yeah, still <laughs> He's still badass. So this was when I started le- learning metal. So uh, And guitar. At what point did guitar come into your life? Where did that come from? Young, because uh, I, I asked them for a guitar because I wanted to play guitar. And I had to go to take courses with uh, someone. And um, the guy told my parents, oh, your kid is nev- never going to be able to play guitar. Well, fuck that guy. And I, pr- I don't know. I, I, I wanted to learn like Mel. But he was showing me fucking uh, classical, yeah, well, uh, Clyde de la Lune, so things like that. And Simple I, child melodies. Yes, and I, I was like bored, and I, so the guitar went away, and uh, I picked up the guitar when I don't know the end, end of high school, and um, I start learning by myself. So I still to this day don't know any notes. Wow. It's like the complete opposite of Christian. Yeah, yeah. From Cryptopsy. It's like the, the complete different opposite where yeah. he's completely technically uh, fluid and perfectionist, I would say. Yeah, he hear a note and he knows. He knows it right away. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. I'm hearing a note I have to, okay, I'm going to search for it. Okay. But you pick it up pretty quick. Though, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad, I think. <laughs> Hope so. So, so this uh, evolves into when... T- talk to me about your first shows. Do you remember the first show you went to go see? Uh, yes. And the first r- real actual show I've seen was Green Day. Uh, it was in high school. It was at the, the old forum where the Canadian oh, were playing. Shit. So yeah. it's. I never went saw a show there. Uh, it, it was not the Dookie album. I think it was the album after that. I, I don't Nimrod. remember. Nimrod? Does that uh, make sense? Maybe. I think maybe, maybe yeah. But it was like, a, it was a life changing. Like, I, I want to do that. I want to Were do you that. playing guitar again at that point? Or? I, I was kind of in the middle of trying to. Uh, but, like, when I've learned 
that because it was the beginning of the internet and you could you can download tabs yeah on the internet so i was like okay cheat you know, codes you, cheat you, codes yes <laughs> yeah in a way and you okay you put your finger there there so obviously you guys uh, on the podcast can't see it but <laughs> I, i was doing poor chord like this with his first, first, first and, and middle yes. finger I was like, I don't know, one, It says three, one and two. One, yeah. three, okay. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy. And then evolution to take me to your first time on stage. Do you remember your first show playing guitar? Oh, yeah, I was scared, man. It was with the last felony. And, really? Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we did the small bar in my hometown, Sorel. Sorel, which is on the south, south shore, shore of, of the... Far, far away. How I mean, far is that from Montreal? It's 45 minutes from Montreal. Oh, it's not that far. Yeah. And um, after that, we, we made that show. We did track a few songs, then... I've met all the guys in the Spies Icon because uh, it was just the big family in Montreal and we became friends. And You guys just fit right in there. There was Zion Dissonance, the Spies Icon, Beneath the Massacre, The Last Felony, yeah. and so many more. Yeah, so many the, the more. French, the, day, yeah. the French scene in the early 2000s was strong. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a nice time, man. Seriously, it was, uh, we, we did, I did my first tour with Last Felony, obviously with With you guys, that's this I'm is get, where I'm, 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 met get, I'm you. getting there. Yeah. Oh, you're getting there. Okay. <laughs> so it was 2008. That is when we met. We met in 2008. I was um, still very new to extreme death metal. I was uh, shy. I would say I felt like I didn't belong, and that tour specifically was not the best tour for. It was not, for but Crypto for us, it was for you guys. Yes, but for Crypto yeah. yeah. And I've spoken about this before. I think on the podcast, maybe, but the fact that you guys toured in a, we were in an RV, we were comfortable. You guys were in a sprinter, and you put just a piece of plywood over the Not a the sprinter, benches. just just a fucking, just a van. Yeah, just a van. <laughs> And you put just a piece of plywood yeah, um, on, on the, the benches, bench. and you guys would go to sleep. And I remember being jealous, not of the way you were sleeping, but the the happiness yeah. in that van. It was so funny, man. The sense was, of com- we had the camaraderie. Fun, we had the karaoke machine exactly. in, the, uh, in the van. Uh, we had so much fun. And we just spent the whole tour fighting. You, not you not, got, me, yeah, not yeah. me specifically, yeah. but people that were in the band and no longer in the band. Yeah, the I, dynamic I, was very different. I remember being. It, it was because like I you remember guys were like because accomplishing something, and I felt like we were on the brink of failure. Yeah, kind of. But man, we we became friends at that time because of that, and uh, even for us, it was just, um, man first tour with Cryptopsy and Origin yeah. it was like. Okay, it's uh, two of our favorite bands. So Go Galley. Yeah, <laughs> through Galley. Yeah, it was it was it was awesome. Went all across the, the uh, all across Canada. Uh, from, that, from that was a the, like the literally biggest all across Canadian Canada. tour yeah. I ever did. Same it was like same, yeah. 30 dates, something like that. So we just, went we went all the way out to to Halifax, then all the way back. Victoria, we played to Victoria. Victoria. That was a crazy night, which I will not talk yes. about on the podcast. I think we did mushroom. There. <laughs> we did. We did a whole bunch of stuff that night <laughs> that we won't talk about on the podcast. Crazy, crazy shit that, that happened that night. Mark or Bicky. Thank you for her saving yes. us that night. Oh, yes. I What remember. a fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's where you met Christian. Christian produced um, Too, Too Many, Many Humans, Humans, which is celebrating its 15th anniversary yeah, this 15 year. 15 years. Um, it came to a point where the last felony was falling apart. What, what would you, in your opinion, consider the end of that era of the band? Because it doesn't have to be over, as we were talking about the other day. Uh, it's, um, it's a couple of factors. It's just, uh, we, we, got, um, we got an agency in the States. We had the brand new van. We had, we had you were ready, everything. You were ready to, to go. Yeah, we were ready to go. And um, I remember we were getting that tour with, uh, I think it was with Sepultura. Uh, I remember it was Nurexis that and That took the slot. Up. Yeah. It was a huge But, tour. It was like yes, Nure- it was a huge tour. And we, we were on that and um, we didn't add our visa because the... Um, The Life Force, we, our label back in the days, they were in Germany and they couldn't help us. And we didn't know how to do that. And uh, we tried, we tried. And it was like just getting too short of time to get the visa. And uh, the agency just told us, uh, we're going to take another band. And then we lost that tour. Vince quit. 
Um, Vince was my best buddy in the band, and uh, also Seb quit. So we got uh, a new drummer from Quebec. We got a new bassist from Quebec. Uh, we got um, the new guitar player from Quebec. So it was like... It's no longer we, a Montreal band. No, it was no longer a Montreal Which band. Which doesn't necessarily matter anymore. No, but, no, but it's not bad. But back in the days, it was just... The vibe we, wasn't there anymore. The vibe wasn't there. We can like write stuff together. It's just... It was not fun. So um, we, we didn't quit. We just... Nothing happened. Uh, an extended hiatus. Oh yeah, man! It's uh, ten years. Uh, Fifteen years, you're saying. Almost yes. But what's crazy is that uh, having toured with you, uh, when people find out that you're from the last felony, all these prominent musicians freak out because they fucking love you guys. Yeah, I, I believe. Last Did felony you guys was understand? Like, like, I, no, I, yeah. I, I don't get it because. Uh, Maybe, man, we, we haven't pushed the machine enough back in the days because maybe if we we'll have pushed through everything, we have we will have gone somewhere. But, uh, man, it's funny to see all bands that are saying, oh, oh yeah, Last I know your band. Like, I know like your ingested, band. Ingested, just Sean, when we toured with them, they, they couldn't fucking believe you were on the tour with us. Yeah, we, yeah. the first time I've met Sean, because uh, he was talking to me f since, like, a long time. And they played Montreal. They all came, crashed at my place. And we got hammered drunk. <laughs> like, me and Sean... I remember we were in my studio place and he was like, I want to listen to the tracks of uh, Too Many Humans, like uh, just the guitar, just this. And we spent all night just, he was, I think, the biggest fan. So there comes to a moment where you decide to stop hiatus. You go and then you have the opportunity to join Iron Dissonance, but no longer on guitar. Was that yeah. a struggle, like, in your mind? And was that, like, a temporary thing? It was a temporary thing. It was just, oh, okay, I'm gonna have the opportunity to play some shows again. It was like, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's only gonna be one show, which is uh, the Despise I Can Return, I think, at Club Soda. I mean, we, know it, we knew it's gonna be sold out. It's gonna, a okay, massive it was, show, yeah. Okay, uh, I had two weeks to learn... Uh, nine Ion Dissonance song. If, anyone, is, if uh, anyone doesn't know Ion Dissonance, it's not straightforward music. But it's still uh, on bass. It's still a bit a little easier. Bit easier. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And, and uh, man, I practice, 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 and we played the show, and uh, it was it was great. Then they're like, um, oh, are we doing a new record? I was like, oh, well, okay, well, I, I'm there. I'm gonna do it with you. So we we worked on the song. We. We did track a new record. We did play a few few show in the states festival, and then it just another extended hiatus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not a thematic that's coming up because you're heavily involved with us. Do you remember that day that Christian? I imagine Chris called you. It was uh, it was Ollie or Chris. I think it was Ollie that hit you up saying, "Yeah, you want uh, you want to get a gig for this tour because uh, I can be there because of cattle, probably." Ollie's very busy. Yeah, he was in the studio with cattle, I believe. Yeah, he was with Dave Otero. And, Shout out to Dave. Uh, Ollie came to my place. We he showed me the song. I wrote some tabs. And then um, I started practicing alone, and I uh, said to myself, fuck, <laughs> what did I get involved into, man? It's just, ah, oh, man. Cryptopsy's not straight either, yeah, yeah. But I made it work. I worked my ass off, and uh, yeah, I, I remember the first show in Netherlands. I'm Netherlands. going right there. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just not far from here. So it's just uh, Til Tilburg, not too far from here. Uh, we had made these set lists, right? And I fucked up your set oh, yeah. list or something. Oh, yeah. What's that fucking song? <laughs> and I'm like, Dom, Dom, just relax, man. Slit your guts. You got this. <laughs> There's 2,000 people there. It was a great show. Oh, and we only had two jams. Just so, Oh, okay. It's, uh, I don't right. even think I went to a jam with no, you. No, you didn't. <laughs> You I'm very did. welcoming, right? Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see each other in. Uh, I'll see you in Netherlands. In Netherlands, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, you got this. Yeah, you got this. And then uh, the pandemic hit, and then we've done all, basically every show 
since then, but with you, except for Ollie came out and did Brutal Montreal, and then everything else basically has been you. You've been out with us. Ollie's still part of the band. If people are listening, it's not like a weird thing. And uh, we're, it's great to have you. It's, it's a, you're, you have this calm, cool demeanor uh, with zero stress. It's, it's, it really helps the, the ambiance and the vibe within the band. So you bring a certain maturity to the band. Uh, we've toured so many times together. We did that first one in 2019. And then we did uh, the return after the pandemic, the the U.S. tour. U.S. tour. We went to Asia and we Asia. suffered together. Man, that was crazy. That, I, I never believed once in my life I will go to these places. It's, it's just unreal. And then here we are now back in Europe together. What I do like about you on top of your cool demeanor is that you go sightseeing. You like to go and see things. You like to take pictures. And uh, it's fun to have someone that shares that path. I like to walk, basically. So I like to go out and walk, and I'll take a picture. I don't care. And then we go drink a beer. But then we feel like we've done something more than just drink Exactly. Well, what would you do instead? Just sit in, uh, in backstage watching your phone? Which some people I, do. I, I, I could do that at home. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, uh, man, you're in these nice places. Just take the time to go walk and see things. It's just it's amazing. It's just amazing. There is a time where Ollie's going to come back and you're going to see Ollie on tour with us and you'll be at home. What is your mindset for that? How are you preparing yourself for that FOMO? Oh, man. I, I, I don't think I'm going to take it super well, but uh, at the same time, uh, I need some a little bit time to rest because it's been so headache. Like, man tour and uh, I'm working full time in between the tour plus the studio with, with Chris. That's true because there is the whole production side that we haven't spoken about. When did you become a producer? When did that become a part of your life? Oh, I mean, uh, I, I was just tired of paying people. No, 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 no. Uh, seriously, I was. Uh, I had a project with Miguel from. Um, was playing in uh, Blind Witness and. Uh, Interesting. Okay. I, it was toner thing. I was like, ah. Oh, Maybe I should just try to understand how to record band. And because um, I didn't want to bother Chris at the time, because like I know he's doing his you, thing. You didn't consider it like a serious enough project? No, Is that why? no yeah, I, I was, it was fun. I, I, I wanted to have fun. This was after the last felony? Oh, yes. Before yes. Ion? Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, it's in, kind of confusing. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And uh, so I start learning Pro Tools and... Um, And I was like, oh, uh, I don't understand this quick. So uh, I was like, uh, someday Chris told me like, oh, I need, I need help for this. Could, can you help me? Okay, okay. Um, so I was like, project and project and project. Uh, yeah, once, and, you're, once and, you're good at something, Chris is going to keep you around. And it, I'm getting paid <laughs> for that. I was like, okay, so, so I'm going to do more and more and more. That's super. So you know what's funny is I met Chris because he was that guy for JF Dejne back in the day. Yeah, probably. It's yes. crazy. We just got delivered a new beer because, uh, ooh, this label feels amazing. It's uh, called North. Eight times around the sun from North Brewing, which is out of... It's from the UK, which is that we're actually heading in the next few days. And we got a Goza here. Cracked it. Goza with black currant and strawberries. This is going to be really good. 4.5%. I love it. Look at this color, people. You can't see it. <laughs> So Chris just kept sending you and sending you and sending you projects till eventually you're basically one of his right-hand men there. Yes. I'm, um, how do you say, he, he, he cannot, uh, he needs me. <laughs> so, this is so good. This is great. Black huh? currant, strawberry, cherry, fruited goza. Mm. Hell yes, and his label feels amazing. So cool. So production is like a like a side thing for you, but it's also becoming a more and more thing for you. Yes, because, because now bands, once you find out like there's this extra producer that hypothetically charges a little bit less than Chris in the same city, he might go. They might start gravitating towards you. I, I did quite a few bands. Uh, Blight, um, Blight, which I had Gab yeah, on the podcast. I, I, well, it's funny because Blight uh, was the first band I did, and I I did, didn't know nothing about like. 
tracking an album. Once again, that that Ion Dissonance family, yes. early 2000s, yeah, 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 trust yeah. circle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And because uh, it, it's funny because I, I got them signed. It was a nice label and uh, they did nice vinyl and, uh, and everything. And it was cool. But that was the first record I did, and from first to last, like recording drums, to guitar, bass, vocal, mixing, and mastering. And I, I've listened to it the other day. I I, I think it sounds like shit, but it but sounds that's, that's great. What at all the same producers time say. Yeah. It's just uh, the, the the feeling is there of the of the song. I I've made. You captured the soul. Yes, I, yeah. I, I think because Gab is so talented, artistic. Just, yes. He's one of the most artistic people he I is, know. Yeah. He is the best. He's the best. Yeah, very interesting. This is delicious. Let's take a sip. It's one of the best beers of the tour. Very good. It's from the UK. From the UK, from North Brewing Company, UK. Yeah, we're going there. I will be googling that once we finish this. <laughs> So then, Ingested loved you so much, they hired you to play bass on their albums. You basically play live with them when they didn't have a bassist because they'd use your tracks in yeah, the room. Yeah, my tracks are... Well, I don't know if I'm, they're still using my track, probably, because yeah. they're from the record, but... Uh, how, how do you feel about your identity as a guitarist diminishing and you being <laughs> more known as a bassist? I don't know. I, get, I guess... I don't mind because uh, it's music and I love doing it. So um, when 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 it's fun, it's it's fun. When uh, it feels like it's work, it's less fun. So correct. As long as everyone's in a good place and a good happy place, we're yeah, having I a mean, good time. I mean, we what we do now is is work. We're working, but uh, it's still fun. So like like you said, we get to hang out at those cool places, drink nice beer. It's just. But it's not life, fun about that. Life is good. And then we get to life play a fucking good. show. Yeah. Life is good. Packed and, ass and show. Nice shows. Like yeah. on, on this tour, it's actually amazing. Like all all the shows are great. And yeah. uh, when when you get a nice reaction, like your album is fucking great, and it's it's, it's fun to play. I I like playing the new song. Same. Same. New material. Also, I also also did work on the album with Chris. So. Uh, I've been listening to this album for, for years. Years, <laughs> but not years. Uh, it's it was best we sat on it for quick. a while there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you you probably got it after we were working on it for so much. Yes, so, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, beer. Let's get back to beer. If you could make a beer for yourself, the perfect Dom Grimal beer, what would that be? And why ha why hasn't Masora made you a beer with your face on it yet? <laughs> They actually did. Really? Yeah. It's 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 called Doom. <laughs> Really, I've drank that beer. It's it's a pale ale. It's um, like four point or maybe five percent. This is like the best, like because it's not too high. You can you can drink a lot of them, and it it's super good. Like I I can taste like I love IPAs, but I don't like drinking eight eight or ten percent beer because you chug two and you're like oh. you feel like shit. Yeah, talk to me about that that maturity, and that's something that I've. I try. Fox and Hops heads are gonna laugh at this. I try to follow your rhythm. To to you, you have this maturity of like, okay, th this night is over, and you go to bed. And I try to follow you. I try to be inspired by you because it tends oh, to be. Oh, you're better. It it tends to be the right decision. <laughs> uh, because. Um Like when we drink good things, I will drink them all because uh, <laughs> it's good. And when it's good, it's good. When when we drink bad beers, like the Pilsner, that is, you, you, you drink them and it's like ah, man, ah, it's so disgusting. <laughs> it's all the same. But man, I don't like this feeling first, and then I don't like the hangover. I hate that. I don't, I don't like. Also, not being uh, able to when you you start losing the the control of your body, like you can you can feel that you're doing wrong things or not not wrong things, but you you, you know like your body's not uh, connecting with your brain uh, all the way. It's just I I don't like this feeling. I dislike it. It's just so yeah. Sometimes I get. 
drunk with you guys, but most of the time it's just, okay, the beer is not great. I'm not gonna spend like time drinking this because I, I, I'll go in my bed and tomorrow I'm gonna have a great day and we're gonna walk to this city and, and it all starts day. over again. But it's, it's a wise decision uh, and even after the US tour I tried to have that mentality at home. What would Dom do? Would he have the extra beer or would he go to bed? And, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> even even my girlfriend, um, she she used to drink a lot of wine, uh, home alone, like drinking wine after work, and now she doesn't. Maybe maybe I'm a good influence, or you're, you're a very good influence. But on maybe at the same time, I'm a bad because it's just sometimes it's just fun to relax and have a. Sometimes she 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 brings a bottle of wine. She drink him by herself, and uh, that's fine. Because I I don't like wine. And she no she, white wine. No white wine. Yeah. I like I like red wine or orange wine. The one we got in uh, Grand Rapids. Hell yeah! Shout out, shout out to Todd. Todd, yes. Shout out to Todd. Uh, used to be at Speciations Artisan that was, Ales. He's that moved was on elsewhere one now. of the best wine I've ever had. Natural wine. Fucking delicious. I still have two bottles. I don't... Well, you got to open them soon before they yeah. explode. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Every once in a while, last question, every once in a while it happens to everyone. Even to you, I imagine, when, when you, you lose that switch, that maturity that you have so well, what is your hangover cure? Uh, Putin. <laughs> but it doesn't sure. happen very often, but, I don't think. Yeah, no. And we can have this now uh, in, in, in Europe. So uh, that's why I don't drink. No. <laughs> that's it. You have to have like an, like an emergency SOS Putin bag that you can rip no, open. No, um, I'm, I'm carrying. Um, every time I see Gatorade, I pick one and I put it into my bunk. Really? So okay. every morning, because it got electrolyte. Because uh, the only thing that your body needs when you're hangover is water. So, just drink a Gatorade, uh, orange, orange preference. Gatorade. Okay. Yes. Yeah, most and, people uh, say the blue, actually. No, for me it's orange. <laughs> it, it's the it's the one that helped me. Dom, thank you so so much for taking the time, hanging out here in Eindhoven at Van Mol. Uh, we're gonna keep hanging out, and we'll probably get another beer because it's so fucking good. But not with you guys listening. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Man, this was so long overdue. He's been helping out Cryptopsy for so many years. I'm slightly embarrassed I never did it earlier. Love, Dom. I love you, dude. I hope you listen to this. Uh, everyone wondering why I called this episode Dracula on a Boat. Well, it's definitely an inside joke of, of Cryptopsy from the previous tour that we just did with Atheist when we recorded this episode. I called this episode that just to make Dom laugh, so I hope that I accomplished that. Uh, ask me face-to-face -face one day and I'll explain it. It's really silly, and that's why the episode is called Dracula on a Boat. We are heading out in a few weeks to hit the States and Canada. Canada, but sadly, Dom is not there with us on the Scream of Perseverance tour. Uh, I'm going to miss Dom greatly, and I'm looking forward to hanging out with him again real soon. Massively stoked to have finally had this conversation with Dom. Thank you so very much. Now, if you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast's mailing list. You can do that by going to my website, voxandhops.com. That's V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S.com. And when you do that, you shall receive one email a week that will contain all of the details of everything that has happened recently in the world of Vox and Hops. You will get to see which episodes I dropped. You will get to see which episodes I have coming up. You will also get to hear about anything that is going on in the world of Cryptopsy, such as our upcoming tours, exclusive merch drops, and little hints at secret things that we have coming down the pipeline. You will also get to see which albums the Vox and Hops album review crew have reviewed recently, and you will get to see which albums Jerry Monk, Vox and Hops' Metal Architect has added to the Brutal Awakening playlist. The Brutal Awakenings playlist is jam-packed with all of the freshest, best new metal releases. Trust me, if you are looking for some new music in your life, the Brutal Awakenings playlist will have you covered. It's available on both Apple Music and Spotify, so you should definitely check it out. So please do me a favor and sign up to the mailing list. The Vox and Hops Metal Podcast is brought to you by Sound Talent Media and Evergreen Podcasts. I hope you have a killer rest of the week. I will be back next week with another episode on Tuesday, but in until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. Oh,